Hi, this is CAD CAM Lessons. In this part, I'll first show you a few essential tricks for selecting geometry without getting errors. Then we will push the limits of the multi-transform tool to create nested patterns, like taking a grid of shapes and spinning it around your part in a single operation. I am recording this segment as a short supplement, and here I want to show you how you can select geometry in a sketch as well as geometry on a solid. Regarding selecting geometry in a sketch, I will create some geometry here. So, in a sketch, if you want to select one or several geometries, you simply click on the geometry with the left mouse button. And if you want to deselect some geometry, you simply click on that geometry with the left mouse button as well. We do not have to hold the control key here. We do not have to hold the shift key here. We simply click the left mouse button on the geometry we want to select. And if you want to deselect all geometries, click the left mouse button outside the geometries. Sometimes it is also worth deselecting all geometries preventively. As a check, before you choose a command, because let's assume I was selecting some geometries earlier and selected two points, and this might not be clearly visible. For example, let's do something like this, where these points coincide with the y-axis. And now let's assume you want to apply a coincidence constraint between the center of the circle and the corner of the rectangle. And you accidentally have two other points selected. And initially you select the coincidence constraint command, and errors appear here. Here FreeCAD tried to apply a constraint between these points, but it cannot be done this way in this case, therefore I select this constraint in the constraint list because FreeCAD tried to add this constraint here. This constraint appeared in the constraint list, therefore first we remove this constraint. And now we preventively click the left mouse button outside the geometries, and we can apply the constraint to the selected geometries. That is why I emphasize here that sometimes, simply if we are indicating some geometries and later our concept changes, we want to do something different than we intended, it is worth preventively deselecting this geometry before choosing the next command. I think you might encounter this problem someday. And now regarding selecting geometry, we can also select geometry using a selection box. We simply press the left mouse button and drag the selection box over the geometries we want to select, and we can do this in two ways. The first way is dragging from left to right, and then all geometries that are entirely inside the selection box will be selected. And if we drag from right to left, geometries that are partially inside the selection box will be selected. So as you can see here, I can make such a selection box and these two lines, even though they were not entirely inside the selection box, will be selected. And that was a short supplement regarding selecting geometry in a sketch. Of course, if you select geometries, you can delete them by pressing the delete key. And similarly, if we have some geometries, we can delete these geometries individually. Even if we created a rectangle here, it is actually four lines that we can freely delete. Okay, that was a short supplement regarding selecting geometry in a sketch and regarding selecting geometry on solids here. If you want to select several geometries, in this case, we have to do it with the control key. And here too, we click the left mouse button on the geometries we want to select. But if there are to be several of these geometries, we do it with the control key pressed. Sometimes situations might arise where several different geometries are close to each other. Therefore, you can switch, for example, to edge selection mode. And now you can select only edges. If you click on a face, nothing will be selected. This can also sometimes be useful. Sometimes it can make selection a bit easier. Here we have different modes, vertex selection mode, edge selection mode, and face selection mode, or without any mode, and then we can select all geometries. And sometimes in the case of selecting edges, the wireframe view can be useful. And in this view, we can easily select edges. This is useful, especially when we have many edges to fillet or chamfer. Then it is worth switching to the wireframe view and we can select edges and we can do it much faster and it will be much easier in the wireframe view. And okay, that's it for the supplement and we are moving on to the next part of the training. We will now move on to the next example. We create a new project in the part design module as a parametric part. And here I will start by creating a sketch on the XY plane and create a circle whose center will lie at the origin of the coordinate system, and it will be a circle with a diameter of 200 millimeters. I click the right mouse button to end the circle drawing command. I close the sketch and will create an extrusion of 20 millimeters. Next, I will create another sketch on this face. 
I select this face and choose Create Sketch, and here I will create reference geometry to this solid. I select the external projection operation, I indicate the edge of the solid and select Draw Rectangle. And I will draw a rectangle with rounded corners such that the center of the rectangle lies on the Y axis. When the Y axis is highlighted, we click the left mouse button. And as the rectangle dimensions, let's enter 10 by 10 millimeters. and enter the rounding value as 2 millimeters and press enter. I click the right mouse button to cancel the rectangle drawing command. And now I select the center of the rectangle, I select this line, I simply click the left mouse button on this point and on this line and choose the coincidence constraint. Now I close the sketch and based on this sketch I create a pocket. And here as the pocket type I select to first. And as you can see, in this case, it didn't work. And this might be because the sketch will not reach this face entirely, that here only a part of this sketch overlaps with the solid, and in such cases the to first option might not work. Therefore, in this case, we will use the up to face option and simply manually indicate this face. And I click OK. And now I will add fillets to the solid edges. I select the fillet command and indicate these edges. And here I will enter 2 millimeters as the radius value and click OK. And now I would like to make a circular pattern of this pocket. And I would like this circular pattern to have 5 elements that will be distributed over an angle of 45 degrees. And then I would like to duplicate these elements that will be created based on the circular pattern over the entire solid. I will show you what I mean in a moment. So first, with the control key, we select the operations we want to duplicate in a circular pattern. It is the pocket operation and the fillet operation. And now I immediately select the multi-transform operation. I click the right mouse button and select add polar pattern. And here as the angle I enter 45 degrees. and the number of elements, 5 elements. Next, I click the right mouse button again and select Add Polar Pattern. And here I leave the angle at 360 degrees, but for example, I enter 3 elements. I click OK, and in this way, we created something like this. That is, we created a circular pattern, and then we duplicated this circular pattern in a circular pattern. And this was another example of applying the multi-transform operation. Regarding this operation, we can combine selected operations with each other here. For example, within one multi-transform operation, we can perform several different transformations, and I will show you this with an example. We will create another sketch here. I select this face, choose Create Sketch, and here I will draw a rectangle, also with rounded corners, such that the center of the rectangle lies on the y-axis. And let's draw a rectangle here, with dimensions of 10 by 10 millimeters, and with a radius of 3 millimeters. Okay, we have something like this. I click the right mouse button to cancel this command. I press the D key to activate the dimensioning command. I click on this point. And here I enter 60 millimeters as the distance of the center point of this rectangle from the origin of the coordinate system and press enter. Next, I close the sketch and here we can create either a pocket or we can add another solid fragment. Let's just add another extrusion. I select the pad operation and create an extrusion of 5 millimeters here and click OK. And now, based on this feature, we will use the multi transform operation and we will do it such that we will make a linear pattern in two directions here and then we will duplicate this linear pattern in a circular pattern. So it will be quite a complex operation already. We select the feature in the operation tree and select the multi transform command. And here initially we add a linear pattern. We select add linear pattern. And here let's define the number of elements as three elements. And then let's change the pattern type to spacing and enter 12 millimeters as the distance between elements. And now let's add a pattern in the second direction. Here too, let's enter the number of elements as three. And we change the axis to vertical sketch axis. 
reverse the direction. And here too, we switch to spacing and enter 12 millimeters here. Okay. And we have something like this. We have a linear pattern in two directions. And now we click the right mouse button. We select add polar pattern. And here, for example, we will make three copies of these elements. We click OK, and in this way, we created something like this. And as you can see, we can combine selected transformations with each other. And in some cases, this can be really very useful. Now, you know the selection habits that prevent sketch mistakes, and you've seen how multi-transform can stack patterns to build complex layouts fast. To see the next step, click the video on the screen or subscribe and continue the full series in the playlist.